Hello. All right, so we are going to start our discussion of the last chapter that we're going to cover uh, called Electrochemistry. This is chapter 17. And what we're going to talk about today are galvanic cells and standard reduction potential. And so before we get into galvanic cells and standard reduction potential, and I'm noticing this should say 17.1 to 17.2, uh, we need to first review redox reactions because redox reactions are involved in galvanic cells. And if you remember, when we talked about redox reactions, this is a transfer of electrons from a reducing agent to an oxidizing agent. So let's review what those two things are. Well, oxidation is when something loses electrons. This is called the reducing agent. <clears throat> Reduction is when something gains electrons, and this is called the oxidizing agent. So if we use this example here, uh, we have iron that is a 2 plus going to iron that is a 3 plus. And in order to make this transition from 2 plus to 3 plus, it had to be oxidized, meaning it lost electrons because it got more positive. So iron 2 plus is oxidized and we would say that this is the reducing agent. MnO4 is a 1 minus here and we're looking now at it being Mn2 plus so we have a minus 2 for our oxygen that makes a plus 8 sorry a minus 8 and that makes manganese a positive 7 and it went to a positive 2 and that means it gained electrons which means that it is reduced or it is the oxidizing agent. Okay, so using that information, let's talk about galvanic cells. In order to have a current, so a galvanic cell is something that conducts a current, uh, we have to have a flow of electrons. And so since basically redox reactions are a flow of electrons, one item in the reaction is losing electrons and the other is gaining, then we can separate the oxidizing agent from the reducing agent and the electrons will flow. And this is what creates the current. And we can connect these to the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent with a wire so that the current can flow along the wire. The only problem with this is that the current will flow for a second, but then it stops working. And this is because the charges build up. We get all the electrons to one side and then they have nowhere to go after that. And so what we do next then is add in what's called a salt bridge or a porous disc and this allows the flow of ions back and forth without a lot of mixing of the oxidizing and the reducing agent. So now we have electrons that will flow through the wire and ions that will go through the salt bridge and this is what creates a galvanic cell which is a device in which chemical energy through the oxidizing and reducing agent is changed to electrical energy through the flow of the electrons. There are two parts to a galvanic cell besides the salt bridge which joins the two. The first part is the anode, which is the electrode where oxidation occurs, so the loss of electrons. And then the cathode is the electrode where, electrode where reduction occurs or where the electrons travel to because reduction would be a gain in electrons. Okay, so if we take a look at our uh, picture of a galvanic cell up here, there's lots of information and we'll get to some of it at another time. Uh, so Okay, so here we have zinc as a solid, plus two electrons going to zinc, two minus, and here we have copper, two, here we have copper, two plus, plus two electrons going to copper, um, and so we've got this salt bridge where our flow of ions is occurring, and so here is our cathode, our reduction, so we would say that the copper is gaining the electrons, and what we are going to end up doing with the zinc is flipping this reaction and so it's actually losing electrons and so this becomes the anode end or the oxidation end and so basically the flow of electrons is going to go this direction through a wire. Okay, so when we have this flow of electrons we can calculate what's called cell potential or electromotive force which is the EMF and this is the pull or the driving force on the electrons. This is what causes electrons to go from the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent. Because the reducing agent is what's oxidized and the oxidizing agent is what's reduced. And so it's going to be the one that gains electrons. The unit of cell potential is the volt or capital V and it also means that there's one joule of work per coulomb of charge transferred. And we'll get into work in coulombs in the next section. 
So to measure cell potential, there's three different methods currently. The first is the voltmeter. This is not very good. Um, when you attach the voltmeter, there's some frictional heating of the wires, and this wastes some of the energy that could be useful for the cell. So it takes away from the actual cell potential, or the maximum. The better option is a potentiometer. This is a variable voltage device that gets inserted in opposition to the cell potential, and it's adjusted until there's no current flowing, and so then we can get the optimal cell potential. Um, but because it's put in basically opposite to current flow, the cell potential is going to be equal in sign and opposite in magnitude to that of the potentiometer. And then the third option is a digital voltmeter, and this only draws very negligible current, and so it's probably the best option. Okay, so we've talked about what a galvanic cell is. Now let's talk about kind of how to calculate its potential using what are called standard reduction potentials. Well, if you remember from redox, it's much easier to separate redox reactions into their half reactions, an oxidation uh, reaction and a reduction reaction. And so basically we can find the potential of each of these and then add them up. And so we kind of base everything off of this standard hydrogen electrode, which is basically a platinum electrode, and we use platinum because it's chemically inert, which means it won't conduct, it won't react. <clears throat> It'll conduct, it won't react. So a chemically inert conductor, and it's in contact with a one molar solution of hydrogen ions, and then bathed by hydrogen gas at one atmosphere. And basically, the cell potential, and that's what this fancy symbol means, is standard reduction potential, or the cell potential. So potential of the cell is zero volts, and then we can use... Overall, we talked about how if we broke it up in each of the half reactions, the overall potential of the cell would be equal to the cell potential for the oxidation reaction plus the cell potential for the reduction reaction. Okay, so this gives us the standard reduction potentials, which is what our little O is for. And these are the values, but only in terms of reduction half reactions. So we know that a redox reaction contains a reduction and an oxidation, which means that one of our reactions is going to have to be flipped because all of these values are given in terms of reduction. And they're all solutes at one molarity, and um, if they're gases, they're at one atmosphere. Okay, so we talked about how we could figure out the potential for the reduction. So like we just kind of talked about, because they're all given in terms of reduction, one of those reduction reactions is going to need to be reversed because we need an oxidation and a reduction. The half reaction with the largest positive potential is going to run as re as reduction because we want the net reduction or sorry not reduction we want the net potential to be positive and so we need to leave the one that's the biggest as positive since we are subtracting. So the net potential of the cell is the difference between the two values. It's the standard potential of the cathode minus the standard potential of the anode. The other thing that we can do with our half reactions, because when they get added up, they must equal the overall reaction, is we can multiply them by some integer, because remember the same number of electrons has to be transferred for both reactions, and this would give us a balanced equation. But because standard reduction potential is an intensive property, it doesn't depend on quantity, and so even if we multiply a half reaction by a certain number, it's not going to change the standard potential of the cell. But we still need to do it to ensure that we have equal transfer of electrons. Okay, so let's uh, look at an example. So we're going to uh, look at a galvanic cell that's based on the reaction of aluminum ions plus solid magnesium going to solid aluminum plus magnesium ions. They've already broken up the half reactions for us. We know that we're taking the aluminum ion plus three electrons to form solid aluminum, and we have a standard potential of six volts. And then we have our magnesium ion plus two electrons forming our solid magnesium, and this gives us a cell potential of negative 2.37 volts. Remember, all of these are listed in terms of reductions. So we're going to need to flip one. So we want to give the balanced cell reaction and calculate the standard potential for the cell. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out which one to flip, and this one is the most negative, and according to the overall reaction, magnesium is the one that is oxidized because it's going from... Uh, basically zero charge or an oxidation number of zero to a plus two. And so we are going to reverse this reaction. So we have magnesium going to Mg2 plus plus two electrons. 
that gives the standard potential for that portion and because it is oxidized it is the anode and so we'll just put anode and this is equal to 2.37 volts okay um, and so the next part that we need to take care of is the fact that we don't have an equal transfer of electrons we have two electrons transferred in the magnesium and three electrons transferred in the aluminum and so if I put my aluminum reaction in there and because this is then reduced this is my cathode so oxidation at the anode reduction at the cathode and this is equal to negative 1.66 volts okay so in order to get equal electron transfer I need to multiply my magnesium reaction by 3 which makes 6 and then I need to multiply my aluminum reaction by 2 and so now if I add them up because I want the balanced cell reaction and the standard potential for the cell I get 3 magnesium plus 2 aluminum ions goes to 3 magnesium ions and 2 aluminum and the standard potential for the cell is going to give me 0 0.71 because I'm taking my um, cathode minus my anode but this is technically negative so it's plus my 2.37 volts and so that gives me an overall value of 0 0.71 volts because it was originally negative but I flipped it so that's where we get the minus and then the negative times the negative okay so we've got our overall reaction and we've got our overall cell potential there are lots of ways that we can notate a galvanic cell besides drawing this entire picture and so what we do is use what's called line notation and this is used to describe electrochemical cells so anode compartments are listed on the left because that's where oxidation occurs and cathode compartments are on the right and they're separated by a double vertical line which is considered to be the salt bridge or the porous disc so here we have our medium which is our solid zinc and here we have our ion which is our zinc 2 plus in solution here we have our salt bridge and on the cathode end we have our solid copper that is our conductor and our copper 2 plus uh, in solution now if you don't have a solid conductor for one of your compartments um, then you would need an inert conductor and we'll get to that in a minute and then you would also just list all the ions that were present um, versus having this single line because the single line indicates a change in state and if everything is in terms of ions there wouldn't be a change of state there there would be a change in state between the inert conductor and the solution and so we'll look at an example of that as well okay so the last part we're going to look at is the complete description of a galvanic cell we've kind of talked about almost all these things now we're going to put them together there are four things you need to include to do a complete description you need the cell potential which remember is always positive and you need the balanced cell reaction we've done both of those things in an example already you also need to talk about the direction of electron flow so the direction that gives this positive cell potential and we'll look at that you need the designation of where the anode is and where the cathode is. Remember, anode is oxidation, cathode is reduction. And then you also need the nature of each electrode and the ions present in each compartment. And this is where you could use the line notation. And if you have all ions, then you need a chemically inert conductor that is usually platinum. And we'll look at an example of that. So these four things are required to completely describe a cell. So now let's look at an example. So we want to describe completely the galvanic cell based on the following half reactions under standard conditions. Okay, so our first step then is to get the cell potential in the balanced cell reaction. Okay, so we know that we want the cell potential to be positive. And we know that we're going to have to reverse one of our half reactions because one of them has to be oxidized. And so in order to have an overall potential of being positive, we are going to have to reverse this reaction, or the iron reaction is going to need to be reversed. Okay, so we've got our silver plus our electron going to our solid silver. That's our reduction. And so this would be our cathode, and that is our 0 0.80 volts. And then we're going to reverse our iron reaction so we have our oxidation. And so this is iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus 
plus an electron, so it lost an electron. So this, because it's oxidation, it's the anode, and that makes it negative 0.77 volts. And so our overall reaction, our electrons um, already cancel. We have one and one, so we have silver and iron ions go to an iron 3 plus ion and solid silver. And the overall potential for the cell is 0.8 minus 0.77, which should give me 0 0.8. 0, 3 volts. Okay, we have our overall reaction. We have the cell potential. Next thing that we need is the direction of electron flow. Okay, well, silver, the ion, is gaining electrons, and iron 2 plus is losing electrons. So that would mean to me that it's going from the iron 2 plus to the silver uh, compartment solution ions. Okay, so because the iron 2 plus loses and the silver 2 plus is gaining gains. Okay, so that's the direction of electron flow. The next thing we need to do is identify the anode and the cathode. So that would be step three. Okay, we know that oxidation occurs at the anode and that um, reduction occurs at the cathode. So oxidation is at the Fe2 plus. This is the cathode. Sorry, sorry, no. Anode. These sound so similar. Okay, and then we know reduction occurs with the silver ions and that that is the cathode compartment. And the last part that we need to do is describe the states of everything. And so the best way to do this is the line notation. And so I'm going to do that up here. Okay, so we know that we want um, the anode first. And if we look at the oxidation, or what would be in the anode, we have iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus. So they're both ions. We don't have a, a conductor. And so this is where we would need to use an inert conductor like platinum. And so we'll do that first. So we have platinum as a solid. Single line to indicate the change in the physical state. Fe2+, plus, Fe3+, plus, because they're both aqueous. Double line to indicate our salt bridge. Then we have our Ag+, plus, which is aqueous. Now, with that um, half reaction, we do have a solid present, the solid silver. So that's our conductor in that compartment. Totally lost my pen. There it is. Uh, so single line to indicate the physical state. Ag is a solid. Uh, and that should give a description of all the states in our galvanic cell. Okay, so here's the practice that we're going to do in class, and we'll also go over some discussion questions. Have a good day.